In this video, we're going to talk all about water. Now, water is one of the important biological molecules in module one, uh, biological molecules. And we need to be able to describe the properties of water and how those properties make water a useful biological molecule inside living things or for living things as a habitat or even inside cells. So let's go through together what exactly we need to know about water. I've left this slide blank so we can actually just do the chemical formula. We can draw a molecule of water. So chemical formula for water, H2O, we know that right back from key stage three, right? Water is H2O. So what that means is there are two hydrogen atoms covalently bonded to one oxygen atom. Now, what we should know for A-level biology is that the hydrogen atoms are slightly positively charged. We call this delta positive, okay? They don't have a full positive charge. They are slightly positively charged or delta positive. And the oxygen is slightly negatively charged or delta negative. This is because the electrons are pulled slightly closer to the oxygen, which gives it that slightly more negative charge. Now, because of this, we say that water is polar, which basically means there is an uneven distribution of charge, which you can see there on the diagram. And this feature or property gives water all of its other properties, basically, the fact that water is polar. So let's go ahead and see what our specification wants us to know in terms of the properties. Now, this looks like an awful lot, but we have seen quite a few five mark questions on water. So we do need to be able to state these properties and explain the benefits. So let's go through them together. The first one, water is a metabolite in many metabolic reactions, which basically just means it takes place in many different reactions, either as a reactant or a product. So for example, we know that in a condensation reaction, it makes water because we remove water to create a bond. In a hydrolysis reaction, it uses water because we add water to hydrolyze a bond. Other reactions that you could talk about would be say photosynthesis uses water respiration produces water so we know that water is really important in many metabolic reactions so we would describe it as a metabolite the second one it's an important solvent in which metabolic reactions occur now solvent basically means things can dissolve in it things can dissolve in water now, this is because water is polar, so it has that uneven distribution of charge. So other polar molecules can dissolve in it. Now, why is this useful? Well, for metabolic reactions to occur, if we have a solution, the reaction will occur more quickly. So I'm going to write that down as well. Reactions occur quicker in solution. It might be worth remembering that because if you do have to give the advantage of water being a solvent, then we could say, well, it's an advantage because reactions do occur quicker in solution. Number three, water has a high specific heat capacity. I'm going to put the word specific in brackets because to get credit for this property, you can just say a high heat capacity. Now, what this means is it buffers changes in temperature, or we can say it resists changes in temperature. And we can also describe water as being thermostable. Now, basically what this means is you would have to add a lot of energy, a lot of thermal energy into water to make the temperature increase. Equally, you'd have to remove a lot of energy to make the temperature decrease. So if the environmental temperature is changing a lot, the temperature of water will not change that much. It is thermostable. It buffers changes in temperature or it resists changes in temperature. 
that's the advantage linked to this, this property of having a high specific heat capacity. Number four, water has a relatively large latent heat of vaporization. Now you might think, is this the same as having a high heat capacity? but it's not quite the same. The benefit of this property is it provides a cooling effect through evaporation. Because what this property is really telling us is for water to evaporate or change state from a liquid to a gas, to water vapor, it does require a lot of energy. And what that means is when we say sweat, for that liquid to evaporate, that sweat, which contains water, it does require a lot of energy, which it takes from our blood in our bodies, and that cools us down really effectively. It's the same for um, animals, like dogs, when you see them panting, water is evaporating off their tongue, and it's taking a lot of heat energy to cause that water to evaporate. So it's going to provide an effective cooling mechanism when it evaporates and that's because it has a large latent heat of vaporization or it requires a lot of energy for that water to evaporate or change state so i hope i've explained that one clearly enough for you to understand it number five water has strong cohesion so cohesion means that water molecules stick together or it means that hydrogen bonds form between water molecules and they're forming between that slightly positively charged hydrogen of one water molecule and the slightly negatively charged oxygen of another water molecule that is called cohesion water molecules sticking together or forming hydrogen bonds with each other now if we're asked to give an advantage of this we can talk about the fact that it helps to support columns of water in the xylem so we're thinking about the transpiration stream. So as water moves up the xylem, because water molecules are cohesive, as the water molecules at the top are moving up and out into the leaf or the mesophyll cells, it's pulling up the water behind it, almost like sucking on a straw. So it does help to maintain that continuous column of water in the xylem, which we see in the transpiration stream. It also produces surface tension where water meets air because the water molecules at the surface of a body of water are attracted very strongly to the water molecules below and less strongly to the air above. So it creates this tension on the surface of the water, which means small invertebrates, such as I mean, pond skaters is a good one to name because they're literally called pond skaters because they almost skate on the surface of the water. Small invertebrates can walk on water, okay, because of that surface tension created because of the cohesive property of water molecules. Water is also adhesive. So this all, almost means water can stick to other surfaces or form hydrogen bonds with other surfaces and again the advantage that we can give for this one is it also supports columns of water in the xylem in the transpiration stream because as water is moved up the xylem not only are the water molecules sticking to each other which would be cohesive but they're also sticking to the walls of the xylem which is made of lignin which helps to pull that continuous column of water upwards and not allow it to fall back down. So we've got six properties here, metabolite, solvent, high heat capacity, large latent heat of vaporization, cohesion and adhesion. Make sure you can list them, understand them and give an advantage of each of those properties. We're gonna look at a, other, a few other properties, I would say. Now, these are other things that can get you credit in exam questions about water. So water is used as a transport medium. Because water is a liquid, and it is a liquid at a wide range of temperatures. And because water is a useful solvent, so remember that means polar substances can dissolve in it. 
it is a useful transport medium because substances can dissolve in it and it's a liquid so it can transport substances for example our blood plasma so blood plasma is used to transport many substances around our body and blood plasma is mainly made of water it transports mineral ions it transports carbon dioxide it transports urea it transports there's glucose in it there's amino acids in it there's even like hormones and antibodies and stuff like that in it but the fact that it's a liquid means it can move those substances around our body and it's a solvent so things can be carried in water as they are dissolved in water water is transparent so this could be linked um, to an advantage it allows light to pass through or penetrate so plants living in water can photosynthesize yeah so think about plants at the bottom of lakes or ponds or aquatic plants if water was not transparent, water would not um, allow light to pass through. And then these plants would not be able to absorb light and photosynthesize to make glucose. So that is another property that is linked to an advantage. Finally, ice, which is obviously solid water, is less dense than liquid water. Now, this means that ice floats on the surface. And that is an advantage because it insulates the water below which basically means aquatic organisms can live in that water without the temperature of that water dropping too low because the ice being less dense will be on the surface and it will provide a layer of insulation to the liquid water below. Absolutely loads of properties. Um, I know that students find this topic hard because it's kind of like a memory test. You've got to memorize the properties and link each one to an advantage. My other tip would be read the question carefully. Is it asking about any property of water and how it's useful in any organism? Or is it specifically asking about properties that are useful for specific organisms or properties that are useful inside cells themselves? So make sure you're choosing properties that are going to get you credit on that particular question. We're going to be posting a couple of questions on water over on my TikTok account, Laura Does Biology. We're going to post a big like five mark question on this if you want to look at that with me. We're also going to post a shorter question just on the high specific heat capacity property if you want to go through that again. So make sure you're following me over on TikTok and make sure you are subscribed to this channel because later in the week we're going to be posting another video that might help you with an essay question on important ions in biology.